Hey everybody, it's the History Buff. You can call me John. Welcome back to the channel. I've gotten a lot of requests for uh, Philomena Kunk, the best moments, um, and uh, this is the second one, so let's get into it. By the way, let me know if you have an echo uh, at the end of this. That would be wonderful. It would be quite helpful for the channel. Uh, we're just getting it up and get, getting going with uh, OBS, so let's get into it. By the way, I'm an American, and most of this stuff is British and British humor, so... And I love British humor. Economists think that they can build. <laughs> Let's go, girls. <laughs> Sorry about that. So this was a very popular one, which you go like this. My old man said, follow the line and don't dilly dally on the way. That sort of rhythm was very popular. So why was that considered entertaining? Why did they fire shells at each other? Because shells wouldn't really hurt, would they? Unless they were those razor clam shells, because they're quite sharp, aren't they? Well, these weren't seashells. If Shelley's... Oh, she's talking about World War I, I think. <laughs> if I'm not mistaken. Oh, my God. That's... And the way she says it is just wonderful. Thank God this is history and humor. <laughs> it's one of the greatest poets in English literature. How come nobody gives a shit about him today? Shelley. That's a complicated question. A co Austin wrote novels which are books which look like this on the outside and this on the inside. Filled with words it's almost impossible to care about. We that is perfect British humor right there. Almost perfect. Um, <laughs> I've grown up in Monty Python so I, I love that. Queen Victoria was born in 1819, in the usual way, out of a woman. <laughs> it was hard to tell that this infant would grow up to be queen, because her crown hadn't yet formed. It was just <laughs> hair, which must have been a relief to her mother as she was pushing her out. I cannot believe that she says this so deadpan. I wonder how many takes it takes to uh, get that right. I mean, don't get me wrong, I mean, she's she's got the history pretty much right on. Thanks to the big sell-off, anyone could get rich, providing they had loads of spare money already. A system still in use to this day. <laughs> it's what, it's what, true. What do you want to turn a pig into a cow? Just see what it's like. <laughs> Since his Victorian origins, Sherlock Holmes himself has regenerated many times and in many different forms throughout history. From drawings, to black and white man, to a black and white man in colour, into a cricketer, and even an alien. Okay, I have to admit, I am not a huge Sherlock Holmes fan. Um, are you guys? Uh, you know, let me know uh, if you are. That's a thing. I mean, uh, I just, I, I never was really into Sherlock Holmes. It's something that I think is uniquely uh, English, um, like uh, Doctor Who, you know. Who was the Darth Vader of the Empire? <laughs> Was it Queen Victoria? <laughs> you probably wouldn't have had anyone quite as powerful <laughs> as Darth Vader, as if you like a supreme leader. Um, what about Luke Skywalker? I think many people would have liked to have uh, undertaken a Skywalker-like role as a savior, but there probably weren't too many of those around. Chewbacca? Let me know if, for everyone who's English, because I, there are a lot of you who are watching this, I'm just curious, out of the... Um, the, the British Empire. Who who is first of all the Chewbacca? Who is the Darth Vader? And who's Luke Skywalker? I'm interested in that. No, I think that's stretching it. He was one of the greatest orators of all time, and some of the phrases he used still resonate today, such as "finest hour," "never surrender," Good and shot. of course, "we shall fight them bitches." <laughs> Hello, who are you? I'm Doran <laughs> Swade. I'm an historian of computing. And I was responsible for building this engine. So what games does it have? It doesn't have any games. It must have, like, some basic games, like Mario Kart or Snake Car. I'm afraid or not. Or Patience, like the shittest one. It must have Patience. What is Patience? I don't know what that is. Is that... That might not be an American thing, or maybe I just don't know what it is. <laughs> but still, she's like... My 10-year-old my gets this. Would I probably ask the same question. Um, Alan Turing. I, uh, 
to me, one of the most interesting people in the world. Uh, I, as far as I understand, invented one of the first computers um, and uh, solved the enigma. And I'm not sure that's what they're getting at in this one, but I, from what he's saying, it does mathematical equations. Um, just that's a side note, you know, of I think something everybody should know. Uh, that was a huge step for uh, World War II to read the Enigma German Enigma codes. It was uh, unreadable up until or uh, uh, starting just after I think World War One, maybe even during the end of World War One, and it had not been broken uh, until Alan Turing and his team were able to uh, um, build basically a computer program it and then they need a baseline and uh it was it had something to do with like all messages ended with something about hitler probably hail hitler or so, you know something like that and um they used that as the base code and that was like the key to setting it so it could then find what the rest of the code was and it was it was fantastic unfortunately you know he was sort of outed as a homosexual and and this is something I, I just don't get the British on is um, up until like the 1970s. It was like, it was against the law to be gay, which I don't know. And he went through like sterilization and shock, all sorts of stuff. And uh, that, that poor guy, and he's like, it, it, we didn't even know about a lot of this stuff until the 1990s. I know I'm kind of going off on a thing here, but I've got a real, um, yeah, really kind of frustrated about that. And I hope you guys do too. I mean, he's certainly one of the one of the great um, British uh, or English minds, and I, I hope you would see it that way too. You know, I'm afraid it doesn't. It does not many games. None, whatever. It just does mathematical calculation. I'll choose important. So it's not significant. <laughs> Who's Ron? Ron. Uh, is there a wrong? Yeah, the one that wrote all the poems and signed them by Ron. Byron? <laughs> yeah, that that was his family name, Byron. Lord Byron. Lord George yeah. Byron. All oh, right, okay. Yeah. Jane Austen died all in right. 1817, only to be reincarnated 200 years later in the form of this banknote. The <laughs> Victorians had horse-drawn buses. But you never see horses drawing anything these days, do you? When did they lose the ability to draw? Is it when their hands sort of turned into hooves? <laughs> on his waiting journey, for that. he visited the Noel Gallagher's Islands and came up with a theory that animals that were dead Darling. were less likely to reproduce than ones that were alive. <laughs> the first Sherlock Holmes... Yep, all right, so she's talking about Dar Darwin. Um, he sailed on the HMS Beagle, by the way. Great name for uh, if you own a beagle. Great name for that beagle would be Darwin. Um, yeah, he came up with the uh, the theory, or he, yeah, basically came up with the theory of evolution, um, which is really taught today, and it's, you can see it happening. Um, there's a case where, uh, which is a fantastic case, by the way, um, in Africa, and you'll forgive me because this is sort of you know on the fly here, but um, there are a bunch of um, lions ended up on a uh, sort of secluded island and it ended up becoming washed further out and they were on their own for like a hundred years and the animals that they had to hunt to stay alive uh were larger and it turned out that over a hundred years or so the dominant males or the dominant sorry lions were larger and if you go to this island today and uh, I'll have to look it up. Maybe if you guys know, let me know down below in the comments. Um, they're huge. They're larger than your average lions. So it's a, it's a, right there, it's a great uh, example of, of evolution. story was such a hit. Conan Doyle wrote 55 sequels, which is four more than The Fast and the Furious. <laughs> Although in the Sherlock Holmes stories, some stuff happens that isn't skidding. Eventually, Darwin evolved himself into a corpse. He was buried here in Westminster Abbey before evolving again into worms and dust. Why I didn't know he was buried in Westminster Abbey. I had no idea. I, I don't know. Did you guys know? I 
did they call World War One? World War One. It's quite pessimistic <laughs> numbering, isn't it? Or did they just know it was the start of a franchise? <laughs> We don't even know if Jack the Ripper was his real name or just a nickname, like 50 Cent. If we don't know when he died or if he died. It's chilling to think that Jack the Ripper could still be alive today, living somewhere out there under his real name. Maybe he's one of your friends or neighbours, or maybe he's you. Which was your favourite of the romantics? Probably um, Byron, I think. Um... Byron was the bad boy of the romantic uh, poet. It's thought that he probably slept with his sister and with most other women in England. Oh, no. He was your favourite? Yeah. The one okay. who slept with his sister? Well, it's, I mean, it's not on that basis, but um, I like him. <laughs> I was just giving you a bit of background. Emma Dale Pankhurst thought women could be more than just okay. wives and mothers, so she deliberately only had five children, leaving her loads of time for politics. <laughs> Radio was an exciting new invention that made it possible to hear other people's voices in your living room without the use of thin walls or a devastating mental condition. Eventually, women did get the vote after the next bit of history. But I can't skip past the next bit because the next bit is war. All right, so she's talking about the, suffrage the suffragettes uh, and the women's movement um, just past the, well, during and past the turn of the century. Here in the States, um, uh, they weren't, I, I, they weren't as, I think, as violent as they were, as they were in, in, in Britain, but, uh, they were, it was more of a, I, I don't know, I think, I think they were more, uh, passive and passive aggressive. There were some certainly, but that was, um, it's something that's so overlooked in history. You know, it's, history is a very male dominated field. I mean, look who's talking to you. But, um, it's, uh, it, you know, I, I was talking to my son about this the other day. I said, behind every, there's an old, that phrase behind every, uh, you know, good man, there's a, you know, a good woman. And, uh, he's reading a book on, um, Eleanor Roosevelt for, you know, his school. And, uh, you know, in some cases you can't help but think that, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt really was the one that got him elected. She, you know basically did everything she went on the the tours she visited the factory she did everything she needed to do before the war to keep him popular and during the war uh to keep up the appearances because he had polio he couldn't walk so she was the second half and they weren't really even though they were married they were together but it was sort of a almost a working relationship um but i mean you look at someone like in the united states and i don't mean to or just give United States examples, but they come to my mind. Like uh, John Adams had uh, Abigail Adams, and um, the weird thing is, is that she, in in the in the letters back and forth, they talk very freely and discuss ideas and concepts. <laughs> and then when you get these books uh, that that Adam or the book that Adams had written in his, I think it was an autobiography. He doesn't mention her at all. And it's it's a very it's a very male thing to do, especially in in those days. But anyway, here you go. And men will find that interesting. Men will find Along that. the way, I'll be shouting at helicopters. The First World <laughs> War was started by the killing of one man, Franz Ferdinand. Mm -hmm. You've probably never heard of him or the band the named band. after him, <laughs> but he was dead important. By which I mean he was only important when he was dead. That's, that's, okay, Today, you all know. John Logie Baird was about to give birth to television, not literally out of his vagina, <laughs> but metaphorically out of his shed. Inspector Phillips. What is Inspector Phillips? Oh, I made that one up. That was just a trick question. Okay, well, I've, it didn't work. Uh, I've seen this clip before. This is where she's asking him about the three different kinds of uh, programming that the BBC does. And she was going to name TV shows, or she named TV shows, I think, and asked him to categorize, like, are they education, are they informative, and I forget what the other one was. And she makes up a TV show called Inspector Phillips. <laughs> and he's like, I've never heard of that. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's, it's good. Sounds real, though, doesn't it? Inspector Phillips. No, I instantly knew that it wasn't a real one. Instantly. Less successful uh, with the Suez crisis. What was up with the sewers? Did someone try to flush something? The sewers? It was awful. 
No, the Suez Canal. What, the canals used to be sewers? That's disgusting. No, no, Suez, it's a place. All right. Luckily, Britain had a hero on its side, a man whose name will never be forgotten, Winton Churchill. In the one... <laughs> Winston Churchill, a man who that's a that's a fantastic joke and delivery. A man whose name will never be forgotten. Winton Churchill. Also a guy that doesn't get enough credit um, at all. I, I mean, we could get into that, but. Wow, um, I don't know that he was that great in his. Um, what was it? His his second term as prime minister in the, I believe in the 19, early 1960s, which by the way, I'm surprised he lived that long the way he drank and smoked. But, um, his, his first term was just fantastic. I mean, the world would have been a different place had it not been from Winston, for Winton Churchill. Um, I'm pretty sure of that. I mean, eventually I think things would have, you know, uh, righted themselves, but, um, I don't know, that's up for debate. Let me know what you think. Oh, there were lots of songs taking the piss out of Hitler, weren't there? How come they don't sing those sorts of songs anymore? <laughs> well, he's not around anymore, so it's not so amusing. Where is he? Well, he's dead. <laughs> he's dead? Yes. Oh, right, so it'd be disrespectful to... Well, not so much disrespectful as um, pointless, really. Pointless. A bit pointless. Yeah. What made the war harder was that we didn't know what the Germans were planning because they said it in a sort of code language known as German. <laughs> All right. If anybody knows German or who has learned German, um, that is an extremely hard language to learn. I have a friend who teaches German at the, uh, the local high school uh, a couple towns over. And uh, she, that's, that is all she does. And it's a tough language, and her students are... At least for I don't know in the United States it's it's a tough language but it's it's a it's a very hard one to learn. Um, I it it's I I don't know why because I don't speak German, but um, it is it is a tough language to learn. I've been told. Also, walking somewhere impressive with my mouth shut while my <laughs> voice speaks anyway, like I'm talking aloud in my own head. During this Suez crisis. Events in Suez reach crisis point. More research needed. Make sure script amended before voiceover record. But Heath soon found himself facing a financial crisis, the likes of which the world only sees about every 10 years or so. Was there... That's so true. Um, that Was that Wilson? I, I don't remember which prime minister that was. Again, that's what happens when you do things basically on the fly. But... Um, yeah, every every ten years there tends to be a reset. If you look at if you look at uh, stock markets, if you look at even currency values, um, you, you know you look at almost every everything because it has a ripple effect. It seems that every ten years or every ten to fifteen years there's a reset. Um, there was one in the mid '80s. Uh, let's see, in the '90s we had one in, in 2007, 2008. So I don't know. We um, you know, right at the uh, 2020s, you know, it's a little difficult to say, but I could tell you that the, the inflation w isn't good. Um, there were some supply chain issues, and that was sort of a, a reset. And they, they constantly say we're going to be going into a recession. And to some extent, we are. It's just that it's a, it, it needs a little, bit of, um, a little bit of time to clear up. Um, and we'll, we'll see it as it goes along but they here in the states they're raising interest rates and that's going to have a repercussion for a mini skirt for men you know like trousers that just stopped under the balls no <laughs> there wasn't there wasn't a mini skirt for men. imagine saying the word balls to her that's just weird for, for men that seems like a shame for whom for men <laughs> no it's not a shame i would i would not and why would i have it so <sighs> on my odyssey I'll be starting sentences in one location and finishing them in another. That is such a documentary thing. It's it's more of a mockumentary. Uh, I guess that's what it's called. It's a it's a mockumentary, but it's based on great great historical knowledge. If you guys like this and you want me to do sorry, you want me to do another one, 
I will by all means. Um, and feel free to send me some things if you'd like me to react to them. Um, seems that the majority of people who uh, are, are watching these are, are English, if you are, uh, and you think there's something you'd like me to uh, react to, that's great. Um, otherwise, I won't claim to be an expert on British history. They, they really tend in the United States to indoctrinate us more on the uh, American outlook than a world outlook. So it's, it's kind of something that we have to deal with in the United States and we have to go to seek other ways of looking at things. It's, it's, unless you're an American, it's kind of hard to describe. Um, but, um, I don't know. Let me know how I did. Do I, did I know enough? <laughs> um, I'll be out for a little while. I have some other videos that are going to be dropped, uh, that I've pre-recorded. So I, um, apologize. I have my gallbladder taken out. Um, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, ring the bell for when the next one uh, drops. I will have these going uh, every three to four days. Um, and uh, I had to do some recording ahead of time. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I hope you're doing well. Uh, be safe, be healthy, and always laugh and enjoy history.